wait a minute, this can't be right. <laughs> this cannot be right. This is so dumb. I'm just gonna, <laughs> let's, just, let's just mix it up. I was told not to scream. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ryan and I am going to try and cook carbonara pasta. And I'm Claire and I'm going to teach you how to cook carbonara. Have you ever made carbonara before? No, I actually don't know. I've probably eaten it. Maybe I could just get like one tip. The hardest thing about making carbonara is making sure that you don't scramble the eggs. Oh, that was going to be the first thing I was going to do. <laughs> Last thing I cooked was top ramen and I took out all of the water so it was just noodles and then I forgot to put the seasoning in, so that's the last thing I ate. When I was in my young 20s and not really happy with my career, I decided to go back to school. I uh, used my savings to go to culinary school and just thought, you know, if I have to work for the next 40 years of my life, I want to do something I love. I know how to make... Yeah, no, I don't. So this is a super quick sauce, so by the time the pasta is done cooking, uh, the sauce should be as well. I know that you are supposed to just put a little bit of salt in the water. I don't know why. You gotta salt the water so that you're seasoning the pasta as well, and it's an old saying that the water should taste of the sea. You wanna make sure there's a good amount of water in your pot as well so that the pasta can move around freely in the pot. So now that the pasta is just softening up in the water, it's just enough that I can start moving it around and ensure that the pasta is not sticking. So this is meat. I'm gonna cook it how I cook bacon, which is to put it into a not hot pan and then wait for it to get hot. You get it. Even though the pancetta has a lot of fat that's gonna render out, you still wanna use a little bit of olive oil to not only help get it going, but also to kind of make the sauce go a little bit longer as well. I like my bacon extra crispy, so I'm gonna make this extra crispy. Bacon's a totally fine substitute for this. It's typically made with cured pork called guanciale. Don't know what this cheese is. Parmesan is from a cow's milk cheese, so it's gonna be a little bit more subtle than the Pecorino Romano. And that's why we're gonna use two different ones, because the Pecorino is gonna be a little bit tangier. And I'm pretty much gonna go half and half for this. I'm also grating it on a pretty small grater. Because it's a hard cheese, it's not gonna melt very well, uh, or at least in, you know, in comparison to something like a mozzarella. Mozzarella, right? Okay, it's probably not. Please be cooked. I'm just gonna take it out now. I think it's cooked because I ate it and it doesn't taste raw. You don't want to go for super crunchy, dark brown pancetta. You want to make sure that there's a little bit of bite there still. I'm going to put some egg yolks in here, as well as a few eggs. And to the eggs, you want to add a bunch of freshly ground black pepper. There's a lot of pasta and a lot of pancetta in here, so feel free to go pretty bold with the pepper in this recipe. But again, as always, cook to your taste. Oh, sh shoot. I'm gonna put this back in. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do is add a few good handfuls of cheese to my eggs. So when I add the egg mixture to the hot pasta, it's not gonna scramble right away. It has a little bit of that cheese kind of protecting it. So some recipes have garlic, some don't. So what I like to do is just kind of meet it in the middle. And what I'll do is just kind of place the garlic clove under my palm and press down. And what that's gonna do is just kind of break it and bruise it a little bit. That's gonna help release a lot of that garlic flavor. I mean, how badly can I actually mess this up? We're both using the same ingredients. All right, let's make the sauce. I'm gonna put this in, and I'm just gonna, wait a minute, this can't be right. <laughs> this cannot be right. I was told not to scramble sh <laughs> You know what'll fix this? Is this cheese right here. <gasps> you gave me two eggs. What else am I supposed to do with them if I'm, not, <laughs> if I'm not supposed to scramble them? I know I scrambled them anyways, but that's because I was at a loss. But really, the only way to tell when pasta's done is to taste it. So it's definitely al dente, which is good. It still has a little bit of bite to it, and that's actually perfect. So if it's already totally cooked all the way now, it's gonna be overcooked by the time you finish your sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and try one, if I can. <laughs> At this point, I'm gonna turn off the heat on this and actually kind of put it off to the side, just to ensure that I'm kind of quickly cooling everything down so that when I add the eggs, it doesn't get overcooked. <laughs> that hurt. There it is. And it's okay that there's some water that's draining off of this and getting in here. Like I said, we're gonna want a good amount of pasta water in here anyways. This is right. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. I'm just gonna kinda quickly stir this around. And even right away, the pasta is gonna soak up a lot of extra water. So what I'll do is just add some of this cooking pasta water in. I feel like I've made a misstep somewhere. So at this point, I think I'm ready to add my egg mixture. 
And you want to do this pretty quickly. So what you're going to do is kind of move the pot as you add this. This really doesn't need any fancy technique. All you're really trying to do is just stir it around really quickly and get a nice, silky, smooth texture. When it comes to cooking, you sort of just have to roll with the punches, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And I do not know what I am doing, so boom. The best thing to do before you serve it to your guests or just go eat it in front of the couch is give it a little taste. So to make sure that the seasoning's right on it. <laughs> that footage is gonna be deleted. Get a nice heaping amount and sort of just twirl it on there a little bit. There's that twirl we're looking for. Get that on there. If you want a little bit of green at this point, you could put in a little bit of parsley here. And that is spaghetti carbonara. And uh, you know, there it is. Am I wrong? It looks like it's missing a little bit of a sauce, but I mean. There's no sauce. <laughs> yeah. Let's give it a taste and see. Yeah, I mean, all things considered, it's, yeah, it's, it's good. I mean, you can see little bits of egg kind of throughout, but the way you were describing it, I was thinking there was gonna be like massive chunks. There's oh, a bit right there. Just a little bit. I was trying not to throw you under the bus there. <laughs> I mean, it's edible, I'd still eat it, but it's just, uh, well. I don't know if I eat this. She's got green bits on hers. I didn't even get the green bits. Oh, you go for the one-handed method. What's the two-handed method? Like this. <laughs> so ideally, it should be a good balance between the pepper, two different kind of salty, tangy cheeses, the creamy egg, and the pinto. If my carbonara was what carbonara was, I wouldn't be into it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm into this. It's very good. Now your next date, you'll know what to cook. Right. Oh, <laughs> yes.